Yep, another new tent. Okay, this time I've gone for the Big Sky Chinook one person. So I'm going to give this a wee try. Uh, I'm just going to wait right now and just see how light it is. Comes across as very compact, which is good. Uh, have a wee look at that. That's a pretty small pack size. So I'm quite impressed with that. And it's coming in at 1.5 kilos, which is perfectly manageable. Although I'm not sure if there's guy lines or pegs in this. I'll check that in just a second. So as I read, a 1.5 kilos, but no pegs and I think no guy lines. So I'm going to have to strip some other tents and uh, obviously I take that into account for the overall weight. But we'll do that later. I'll get this thing set up immediately and just see how it looks. Right, I finally worked out how to put the fly sheet up. There's no instructions with it, so working out where the pole rests and how the clips go around the pole, particularly this wee area here, was a wee bit more uh, just a learning curve, to be honest. So it's been a wee bit slow, but it is actually a very simple clip in process. Right, let's get the inner in. Actually, contrary to what I did say, uh, it does come with instructions. You get a wee instruction sheet. Uh, which will tell you more about how to pitch the tent just on normal paper and it wasn't actually inside the stuff sack so I only found it when I removed the packaging and the labels and it was attached inside an envelope but anyway that helps right we are up we've got the inner inside clipped that in so no need to undo that again until it gets wet uh, yeah quite impressed the reason I put it up on the living room was because I've heard some concerning stories about quality control on Big Sky products, but that may have been in earlier years. This one actually, certainly at first glance and checking it out, seems to be well made. Didn't notice any particularly ropey stitching, which is what I'd heard before. So it seems to be okay. I um, quite like it. I'd say the, the inner's tapered. A wee bit narrow is my first impression compared to, say, the light wave. Uh, but good headroom in it. Um, great vestibules. Looks like plenty of room for... And of course you've got a double door, double vestibule. So that makes it very livable and easy to use in different wind conditions. Um, but uh, we'll get it outside now, I think, and get a proper look at it. One wee dodgy bit of sewing. Right there. Right inside the tent, two pockets near the feet and two pockets at your shoulders. Plenty of hanging loops. You notice I've got these vented sections on the doors open just now, uh, just because it's very, very wet. So I'm just letting some condensation out. Uh, headroom's good, that's fine. Wee bit narrow, and it does narrow towards the feet as opposed to my head. I'll try and show you that in a second. Uh, so, uh, not claustrophobic, but just if I compare it with the light wave I had before, the light wave definitely has more floor plan room in it, which is I guess why they're bringing out a smaller one next year. Just to show you the other end there, that's the Themaris Neo in there in place. So you've got enough shoulder width, it's not bad, and two good generous sized pockets there. Again, more hanging loops and the like, so plenty of scope for hanging lines, torches, etc. So that's good. Uh, vestibule depth is, I don't know if this helps you, is not particularly deep. It's not bad, you'll get a pack and you would be able to cook. Of course, you've got to remember you've got two of them, which is great. Um, so, aye, no real complaints about that side of it. The only thing is this large doorway here, in terms of the length along here, makes me think I might need another pegging point somewhere down the middle where you can see that Velcro tab there. I think the, sorry, not Velcro, the elastic and toggle, which I think is for venting the bottom of the fly sheet. You can uh, pin it up slightly just to create some more airflow, uh, which is probably handy in summery weather. But it is a big, long, unsupported area, which worries me a wee bit that the thing might flap or clap together. Although with a number of poles in it, I think it will be very stable. Uh, the door design is my biggest bugbear at the moment. I'm not sure about this outer door. I'll show you in a minute from the outside what I mean, but it tends to create drips. And unfortunately they get into the inner, as you can see there. Just to show you the headroom, uh, about just six inches or so above my head, I'm five foot eight at the highest point, so it's fine. Um, I would just kind of quantify that by saying 
it's also slightly narrow at the head end, so it's only about a head's width. So the impression is with the door shut, it does feel, still feels slightly tight. You don't have a lot of shoulder come head width uh, because it's got quite a narrow roof on it where the poles cross over. That's the second door open now, so you can see I've got both doors, which are only about a foot, foot and a half wide at that point, just above my knees. So, and then when you put your arms out either side, I don't know if you can see this, but I can virtually stretch out either side, so I've got both vestibules open. So that does feel a lot less claustrophobic. I can get a gear on one side, I can get a rucksack on this side, I can poop on that side, or just decide depending on which way the prevailing wind's coming, although you are meant to put it tail into wind. As far as I can tell so far, no water leaks, it doesn't appear to be silicon sealed. Um, so I suspect I'm going to have to use some silnite at some point, but I don't see any drips on the inner, um, apart from those that came in from opening the door. The tent weighed 1.5 kilo as you saw on the scales, but it doesn't come with pegs uh, or the guy lines, so I have just ordered about 30 metres of 2mm Dyneema, reflective Dyneema, which I'll put on. I've put some temporary guy lines on just now, but I'm going to put uh, double guy lines on just for, for wind protection. Uh, so all in all I think it's going to work out about 1.7 kilos, which is perfectly bearable for a four season tent. Um, I don't think it would take extreme weather, but as a four season trekking backpacking tent for nothing too extreme, I think this will be okay. Uh, this weekend will be the test. Just to give you a shot of the uh, solid door with a wee quarter mesh in position so it's open, and there's a wee toggle just to hold it there in place. Fairly typical stuff, but it's good that you can seal the inner completely, so should be a warm tent. A nice high inner tray ground sheet. Actually nearly a little bit eight inches deep or so. Yeah, about eight or so. It certainly gives you confidence in terms of snow drift and whatnot, getting in powder snow underneath it. It should keep them at the worst at bay. Just another shot just to show you the door tied back. It's quite good, the door hangs so it doesn't fall into the dirt and it just has the one elastic and toggle tie back which is pretty convenient actually makes it a nice big wide door as well so for the bigger chaps or chapesses you can get in and out no problem also worth mentioning from a cooking and a ventilation point of view the zips are two way so as we reach the top here you've got the option to bring the zip back down and another zip at the bottom coming up the way and the whole thing is tensioned by a band across here just to make sure it stays in shape where it's pegged out Inner, as you'd expect, is all easily detachable. You can see the clips there. So you can take down the inner if it's a really bad weather, pack away the inner to keep it dry, and then take the fly sheet down at your leisure. So as you can see, temporarily I've just tied a single guy line on just now, but there's two guy points, so I will create a triangle out of that uh, Helleberg Sulo style. Just try and make it a bit more strong in high winds. And if I can just show you, there's also a prop vent on either side here. So plenty of ventilation at the head and cross. The same on the other side, so it should create some cross airflow. And the wee prop vent can be removed and shut down, which I'll show you. That's the flap shut and the prop just tucked away underneath. Again, you can do it on both sides. See it uses plastic clips across DAC Featherlight NSL green poles. So the poles are excellent quality, should be nice and strong and are very, very light. <coughs> Excuse me. I've also wrapped the guy line just around the pole to give it that wee bit extra strength. I said before that there's no pegs or guy lines, so that obviously adds to the weight and cost, so they're coming tomorrow. And also you don't get a pole repair sleeve. So I had one lying about, I'll probably just pop that in the bag as well, just when I'm out in the field, just in case. So the fabric all seems to be beading quite nicely at the moment as you can see and running off no kind of dry spots or kind of areas where it seems to be soaking in so the silver nylon seems quite consistent I think the roof might catch quite a lot of pooling water especially if there's no wind so I'll be looking for leaks in those uh, seams there but again hopefully okay build quality just the, some of the stitching just the finishing is not absolutely spot on which I've heard about Big Sky before Sorry Big Sky, but it's true. Um, so I just need to keep an eye out for any loose threads and the like. 
So there you go, just a quick impression overall. We'll get this thing out of the weekend and give it a wee try in some decent conditions. Uh, as it is, it's blowing a hula at the moment, to be fair, and you can probably hear it in the background, and it's raining pretty heavily. So I'll leave it up overnight and just check out for leaks. But uh, yeah, looking forward to using it. Nice wee bit of kit.